This is a film about what happens to the food we eat. We shall explore the route which it takes through our bodies and look at some of the important organs which process that food so that our bodies can make use of it. We start in the mouth. This girl is having a dental x-ray. She holds the film in her mouth behind her teeth. Now, if you can walk into this machine and rest this part of your chin against the plastic bit there. Forehead against the front. Okay, so you just keep nice and still like that. Okay, very still now. This special camera beams x-rays through her teeth onto the film. It produces a sort of panoramic picture of the teeth, rather like the camera used to take a group photograph. Here's a mouthful of adult teeth. The human mouth contains different kinds of teeth for dealing with food in different ways. There are molars, grinding teeth, and incisors, cutting teeth. The dentist's been busy. There's a pin fixing an artificial crown to the roots. A child's mouth. These are the milk teeth which fall out to be replaced by the permanent teeth as children grow up. You can see the permanent teeth here in the gums ready to come through. We eat both meat and plants. That's why we have that assortment of teeth. From our food, we get carbohydrates for energy in starchy and sugary foods, fats for storage, and protein for bodybuilding. We also need certain minerals and vitamins. We obtain all of these from a proper mixed diet of meat, dairy products, bread, fruit, and vegetables. The process of digestion starts in the mouth. We chew the food and soften it with saliva, which contains an enzyme, a chemical substance which begins to break down some of the food. The food then passes down the food pipe, the esophagus, to the stomach. We can watch what happens when we swallow using x-rays. The patient has to drink a suspension of barium sulfate, a substance which x-rays cannot penetrate. It's called having a barium meal, and the radiologist can watch how it passes down the esophagus and starts to fill the stomach. Well, not yet, and I'll tell you what, what to drink and when. You've, you've never had this examination before. Right. Watch. The dark patch at the bottom right is the stomach beginning to fill with the barium meal. Special fresh fruit flavour this morning. Now you can see the stomach filling quite clearly as she drinks more of the liquid. Most people don't like it at all, but there you are. Here's the outside of the stomach in the model. And the outside of a real stomach. See the blood vessels supplying the stomach walls? and notice its movement. The model again. The stomach's a sort of bag. From its lining, it secretes another enzyme and also hydrochloric acid into the swallowed food. It also produces, as the mouth does, mucus. The action of these gastric juices is to turn the contents into a liquid which can pass along to the next portion of the digestive tract. Here, we're draining off gastric juice from his empty stomach. He hasn't fed for 12 hours. There it is, a fairly clear liquid. Let's put some raw minced beef into it. We'll now keep this at body temperature for some hours and see what happens. Here we are. You can see that the gastric juices have acted on the beef, breaking it down. Any solid lumps will eventually disappear. After some time, depending on what's been eaten, the stomach contents empty through the narrow end there on the left. This is called the pylorus, 
and a muscle there can relax or contract to open or close the stomach. Here it is in action from inside the stomach. Muscles in the wall of the stomach contract, forcing the contents out, a process called peristalsis. The pylorus opens into what's called the duodenum. Here you can see a barium meal passing over into the duodenum from the stomach. See the narrow channel between the stomach and the duodenum? Let's watch the activity as various muscles squeeze the food onward. Watch at the top left. There it goes. The barium meal is moving further along the digestive tract. Let's look at the model again. The organ coloured green on the underside of the brown liver is called the gallbladder. A thin tube, green again in the model, connects this with the duodenum, bringing down a liquid called bile which helps dissolve fats in the food and you can see another white connection into the duodenum. It comes from this sausage-shaped organ called the pancreas. The pancreas produces a variety of important enzymes and other substances to mix with the liquefied food and start breaking it down into substances the body can use. Using an X-ray body scan machine, it's possible to see various organs in the living body in cross-section. There are the spine, ribs and pelvis. And if we look at a cross-section at the level of this dotted line, there's the liver and the gallbladder and the pancreas shown very clearly. From the duodenum, the food, mixed with gastric juices, bile and substances from the pancreas, passes into the small intestines, where very important chemical processes turn parts of the food into substances which the living body can absorb. There are about three metres of coiled intestine. Here's the barium meal again, revealed by x-rays, being passed through the small intestines. Muscles in the walls of the intestines contract in waves, pushing the contents along. Peristalsis again. the outside of part of the small intestine. You can see the muscles contracting, squeezing food along. The products of the digestive processes going on inside are carried away by the blood in vessels in the lining of the intestines. It's through the small intestines that food substances are at last absorbed into the body. There's a complex network of blood vessels which carry these substances from the intestines to a very important organ indeed. The liver. Here's a model of the liver. It's a large organ with the gallbladder where bile is stored on its underside. It's also a very complex organ, a sort of chemical factory with many important functions. It's in the liver, for example, that the chemical substances produced in the digestive tract from our food are turned into various materials which the body needs. The liver also deals with the fats in the body when they have to be turned into suitable fuels for energy, and it has many other functions as well. These are some of the blood vessels in the human liver where these processes are carried out. They're using the technique of nuclear magnetic resonance, high-frequency radio waves in a magnetic field, to create pictures of the organs in the body. Here's a cross-section. This is the outside of the body. The back. The front. Sections through the two arms. 
and the liver with its folds showing up very clearly. The liver then is a very important factory, converting chemical substances from the food into materials for our living bodies. Blood from the lining of the small intestines carries substances to the liver where they are suitably processed. Then when, for example, energy is needed for any movement, material processed in the liver is carried by the blood to the muscles concerned to be burned as fuel. And remember, there are muscles in action in our bodies every moment of our lives. Of course, the liver can only do all these things if we eat the proper foods we need. When it reaches the end of the small intestine, all the useful food material has been extracted. What's left now enters the large intestines. Here's the start of the ascending colon, up which waste material is now squeezed by peristalsis. And this is the appendix, which sometimes becomes infected. The waste passes up the ascending colon, across the transverse colon, and down the descending colon. While this is happening, water is extracted from it through the walls of the intestines. Finally, in the rectum, it is stored as semi-solid faeces until it is passed out of the body. Let's go back along the journey taken by our food. The intestines, the stomach, there's the liver, and this is the omentum, a protective apron over the intestines. The organs of the digestive tract form a series of processing plants, turning the food we eat into the chemical substances needed by the body as fuel and as building material. Our bodies are continually in action. Our brains and our hearts and our lungs and all the rest must function throughout our lives. And they can only do so if we provide everything they need. If we eat the right foods, then we're going a long way towards making sure we remain healthy and active. The food we chew and taste and swallow has many important functions and we must have a proper balanced diet at every stage in our lives. From the moment we are born, we need food to develop and to grow. We need food to give us energy. We need food for life. Thank you. 